Welcome to the Patriot Barbie podcast. This show is made possible by Spreely Media. Download the Freedom Hub app today and join the free speech movement. I want to thank the people and the companies that keep my show going. All my sponsors can be found on patriotbarbie.com on my shop page. Century H2O, water systems for your home that provide clean, toxic-free, fluoride-free, and pharmaceutical-free drinking water for your family and pets for under $300. Dylan's Restaurants has been a proud podcast partner for years, and the owner is my personal friend. With four locations throughout Arizona, you'll always find one to dine at and love, especially the zoo. Well, especially the ranch. Well, maybe the one floating on Lake Pleasant. Dang it, they're all good. Support your freedom-loving businesses, and please check out Dylan's Restaurants. Small business owners, claim your employee retention tax credit for 2020 and 21 with an accountant you can trust. If you don't know what this is, you could be missing out on hundreds of thousands of dollars. Go to PatriotBarbie.com and click on my partner's page to read up. My Freedom Cart, a conservative-owned, made-in-America, toxic-free company that lets you shop online and delivers everything to your front door. Clean products, protein, snacks, hair care, makeup, toiletries. Dude, ditch Amazon, keep the perks, and support a pro-life and pro-freedom company. MyFreedomCart.com My Beautiful Smile is brought to you by Dr. Daniel Slyke. His dental team is passionate, detailed, gentle, and clearly very talented. My entire smile has been restored to stunning, and I owe it all to him. He's right here in Scottsdale, and consults are free. Go to PatriotBarbie.com, look him up, and schedule your free consultation. You guys, once again, you can find all my partners, my makeup line, my Patriot wine, my merch company, and the Freedom Cart at PatriotBarbie.com under the shop page. Now, are you ready to get started? Let's go. Welcome to the Patriot Barbie podcast. I'm your host, Lindsey Graham, author and conservative activist. I love Jesus, I love America. I'm a proud wife, mom of three, and I'm having bold and witty conversations with America's patriots. The ones that cancel culture desperately want a blacklist. Trust me, I've been there. In 2020, I defied government lockdowns in Oregon, reopened my salon, and became an icon of freedom. I've been targeted by government and raging liberals every day since, and I refuse to back down. Patriots, I'm here to tell you, your values are worth fighting for. The Patriot Barbie Podcast starts now. Hey guys, welcome to the Patriot Barbie podcast. It's Matt Ray. That's right. Instagram, Twitter, not TikTok. You probably got, did you get banned on TikTok? Oh no, I'm still on TikTok. You're still on TikTok, but it's yeah. not, it's Matt Ray. It's still Matt still Ray. Matt that Ray. sounds like a yeah. band name. <laughs> like you, like they deleted it's Matt Ray. And then, and then you're like, still Matt Ray. Like, like, that's it's my still me. Account. You can't instead get of, rid of me. Yeah, instead of 2.0 <laughs> like everybody else does. You're like, still here. Um, so... Matt is going to tell us a really dramatic story. Um, I'm not even going to preface what the story is. We're just going to say that he's part of the Gays Against Groomers movement, who I have shared many, many times on my social media. Haven't gotten Jamie on yet, though. And then you're also part of Trans Against Groomers. So um, I guess it's up to you where you want to start this journey and and tell tell everyone why you're speaking out about your story, first of all. Okay, so um, first of all... um I'm a 31-year-old trans man, and my situation's kind of unique because my mom was told while she was pregnant that she was having a boy. She was told through her entire pregnancy that, and uh, babies actually start off in the womb as female. So when I came out biologically female, there was a bit of a a shock there. Uh And I guess my mom thought she'd never hear anything about it again, but... When I was five years old, I actually turned around to her because she'd taken me to a a clothing store and she'd taken me to the girls' clothes and I was thinking, why are you dressing me like that, you know? That's what felt weird for me. And I said, Mom, like, I think I'm a boy. And she laughed in my face, and rightly so, because when you're a little kid, you know, you you think you're a unicorn. You you think you're sometimes inanimate objects. So she obviously had five-year-old me and was thinking... Don't be sick. And, and what year was this? This was like the 90s when yeah, yeah, this yeah. wasn't all a big thing, really. Yeah, it must have been about 95 or something like that. You were probably one of the like first that. ever little kids. So people were like, <laughs> oh, transitioning. Okay. So why was your mom told she was having a boy, by the way? Well, like, why did they just, it was a huge mistake? I, I don't know, you it, know. It but wasn't she a hormone was, test or anything? 
Like she hasn't told me that far, but all I know oh, is that come that was. On, come on, mom. I need bring to yeah, ring her up, Call mom. Her. Why did she? Mom, we this? got a question live. No. But uh, yeah, like that's what she was told. So even she was shocked. I mean, she was originally going to call me Max. And okay. then I came out and she was like, well, I guess you're Amy now. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. that's kind of how it what, was. How can we make this girl name? Maxine. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I opened up to her and she shut me down and, and, and rightly so, because affirming mm-hmm. children is dangerous. But with my situation, as I grew up, it became a recurring issue and it led to a lot of depression. Mm. At what age? And, like uh, te- as a teenager? I think the depression started when I was around 14. Okay. And it started creeping into my schoolwork too. I was where I kept approaching my mom and, you know, her her views changed a bit. She started being like, listen, before you go down this route, you're still young. Like you could be a tomboy. You could even be a lesbian. You could Mm -hmm. be anything. But back then I I wasn't even seeing people um, in a romantic light because I was so concerned with what was going on inside me. And so it it wasn't, uh, it wasn't sexual. It wasn't like I'm attracted to girls, so I must be a boy. It wasn't any of that. No, like it was more, a case of, you know, I guess it, looking back, it could have been classed as a tomboy, but when I was really young, I was playing football with the lads. Mm-hmm. I didn't get on with girls very well um, because I found them very chit chatty and gossipy. <laughs> and, uh, <How> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this is, the, this is the issue as well with all of this because a lot of girls also feel like that when they're younger and they mm-hmm. are tomboys because of these things. I still feel like that. I don't like girls yeah. either. Like they are chit chatty and gossipy. <laughs> yeah, I still don't like them. <laughs> But, you know, like it, it, it got really intense for me. And by the age of 17, it was affecting my college work. So really were badly. you were you throughout this time from 14 to 17? Were you still asking your parents to, to were you asking them to transition or were you just saying, I feel like this is wrong with me? What was like the call to action for your parents? The asking to transition didn't start till my very late teens because I stumbled upon YouTube. And, and with the way s- things are now, it's very toxic because the problem is with things like YouTube is you look for people you think you can relate to. Uh-huh. But a lot of these people with big platforms, and this is even back then now, this is a long time ago, and even then the influence was strong. Every video I was seeing of uh, other females who were transitioning who wanted to transition to male, they were all saying things like, this is my three months on tea. Look at all these amazing changes I've had. Yeah. Six months on tea, one year on tea. It's now, all butterflies. Yeah, you don't things. see the stuff that happens in between that. Yeah. It's not an accurate picture. Right. It's it's pretty much a lie. Um, but yeah, like I said, my college work started to be really affected. I started dropping out of lessons because I was ashamed of who I was. I gained a lot of weight. Um, I was quite miserable. So it was affecting me on the outside too, you know, yeah. the way I was living. Yeah, everything. And um, so my mum had, and my dad as well, they, they'd been pretty great with me in a sense that even though they would shut down the whole the whole trans thing, um, I was allowed to have my hair short. I was allowed to wear a football kit if I wanted to. Just being a tomboy. Like, yeah, they, like they, so. They let the tomboyness slide. Yeah. Yeah, they let me express myself, and I I think that's very important as well because uh, looking back on the situation, whenever my mum and would say the things she did, I thought she was the wicked witch of the west mm-hmm. you know you're not i was me what like I want. what do you mean that at age 12 i can't be a boy do you know what i mean like, <laughs> how dare you run run my how life how dare you as like, long as you live in my house you'll remain your biological gender yep <laughs> and the worst thing about that as well was these uh tras on youtube and things they push that kind of narrative too mm-hmm. if your parents don't yep. do this they are evil you're probably yep. going to end up dead if you don't do this they so, don't love you for your true self yeah i think yeah. a lot of the reasons why i was suicidal as a teenager was because i was being told that i should be because Ugh. of all these things um so yeah college started fluking and um i ended up dropping out because i tried to end my life mm. and when it came around to it uh, I was in the hospital room and the doctor said, what'd you do this for? And I was like, because I I feel trapped. Like I, I feel like I'm a guy and um, I don't know how to live with all of this. And I think my family are against me and all of this. And the doctor turned around and said, well, you're nearly old enough to go through the things. So if, why would you end your life when you're so close to being there? And that's when the the suicidal stuff kind of ended because I was like, I'm actually being really stupid by feeling this way Mm. because 
there are ways around it and there is much worse things in the world. And um, so I chose to pause transitioning until later in adulthood because I wanted to go back to college and I wanted to succeed. I had a really amazing teacher, bless him, he passed away. Um, but even though my grades had lacked, I shouldn't have been able to get in college in the first place, but I did drama and stuff and he, he saw my passion with that and he was like, I know you can do this, I'm letting you back on the course. Yeah, and I, awesome. I came out with Flying Colours second time, but I was self-identifying as Matt by that point. Okay. Um, still hadn't had any medicalization. Um, at age 26, I finally went ahead with my my journey. So, so was it like the idea that you could just say you were a man that gave you that mental peace to not be suicidal or be like depressed or, cause nothing really changed except that yeah. you're like, I'm just gonna proclaim this. Yeah, and I think just... I, I just felt felt better with that. But at the same time, I, I still felt like it wasn't enough. I wanted to then take the next step uh-huh. and the next step. But again, I blame a lot of it on these people on YouTube and mm-hmm. things like that because they they don't tell you that you can love yourself and yeah. I could you know like you said I had no medicalization so technically I was just a tomboy back then still I was wearing men's clothes but I still yeah you know, so was... you're you're um I love to you can tell I love to get visual like I'm there on your college campus you probably still look like a female oh I you did yeah don't have facial hair because you're not going through any hormonal nothing yeah so what was that like living as a female, you're, you're fe- and you know that people can probably tell, but you're like, call me sir. And they're like, uh, like people like me who, you know, I've spoken yeah. up so much about this, which I find this conversation lovely, by the way. Like, how, how was, what was that like? Honestly, like, the way it felt, it actually helps me understand some of these people we're seeing now. So, you know, when you see these, like, male to females and mm-hmm. they ask if they pass and, a lot of the times, sometimes they, they, they don't and people can see. Well, my own personal thing is because I was identifying the way I, I wanted to, I kind of created an image in my own head that I immediately passed because I was living this way. Your oh, feelings, the way you feel can really cloud your judgment when it comes to whether you actually pass or not. Okay. And it's really helped me understand these people and kind of, I kind of feel sorry for them in a way because yeah. a lot of people are brainwashing themselves. Mm-hmm. That is what's happening. Um, I've come to the point where I've realized no matter what you do, you can change your appearance, but you can never change your biological sex. I will always be a biological female, no matter how much testosterone I take, despite mm-hmm. the surgery I've had. Mm-hmm. You cannot change it. Mm-hmm. Man, that's so so powerful for people to hear because so much of the movement, and I'm, I'm sure, do you get hate from the left? Do you get hate? I get so much hate. I, I, I can imagine because... You're speaking what's true, but th- they want literally people like me and, and clearly you to believe, no, I, I am a woman they do. or I am a man. It's like, but, but you're not. You sh- if you want to live your true self, go for it. But you mm-hmm. cannot tell other people to embrace the lie. Absolutely. And like some of the things they've they've said to me, like I've had some really dark days and my wife's been my absolute rock mm-hmm. through all of it because sometimes I've gotten a lot stronger with the with the comments, but sometimes people are just so dark. You know, I've oh, very, I've had people tell me that I would have rounded up my own people in the Holocaust. Um I get called transphobic all the time. Um one of the Ones that really made me laugh, though, and I, I don't understand woke language, but I had it translated for me. Someone commented on one of my videos saying, nothing quite shows the advantage trans masks have over trans femmes more than this video. And I said to my friend who understands, I was like, what are they saying? Oh, because you look like a man, you can't speak for the trans community. Sorry, what? I thought the what? whole point of being the trans... The more you look like the <laughs> sex that you're trying to be, the less authority you have. Yes. The more you pass, the less you pass. So basically, unless you're a non-binary, you, you don't have a voice. Because, yes, absolutely. You know, yep. like the, the one that was on Crayola with the beard and the long hair. Yep. And, unless you look like you don't know what D- you like are. Like Dylan you know? Mulvaney, who says, yes. I'm a girl. And you're like, you're in no way a girl. You have mm-hmm. a red bow on. And that's about it. Oh, my gosh. This is wild. They, they say the most horrible stuff. You know, death threats. They want to burn down our houses. Um, all of this yeah. just because not just me as well, everyone else doing this, we're speaking up 
to protect children. Yes. And that's what really gets me because they are turning uh, this into a political issue, which mm-hmm. is absolute garbage. Since when was trying to protect children's innocence and them in general a political thing? Right. Yeah. Why is it far right that I don't want children to be mutilated? Yeah. So that's your whole platform is what, like you were 26 when you did this. You yes. were a grown adult. You had lived a whole life trying to figure out who you were. Yes. Um, what, what, so what happened, what happened with when you were 26? How did you start the process of? So I started my transition in the UK. I still lived there at the okay. time. And the way that works is you go to your, your GP now, What's it's kind of your, oh, your doctor, practice. sorry, yeah, okay. general practitioner. So I don't go to the doctor. It's a kind of risky <laughs> thing as well because depending on who your GP is, uh-huh. their opinion is going to affect whether they send you on your way or not. Mm. And now they're being paid to affirm these things. Yes, now, whether it's real or not. Yeah, so Without bear in mind, psychological... I'm 31 now, so it was quite a few years ago that I, I started this. But even then, when I look back, I can see the red flags that were coming, the slippery slope, because I went to my GP and they sat me down and all I said was, I think I'm a boy. And they were just like, okay, I'm referring you to Tavistock. Just like that. Yep. Just like that. So then there was a a bit of a wait to go to Tavistock because that's the sole gender clinic in the UK. It's actually been shut down now for not being safe for kids. Oh my gosh. Yes, that's the one that was all over the, the news. That's where I went. Wow. And, um... I noticed some crazy things while I was there. So that my, my first appointment that I had there, uh, again, it was a, how do you feel? And you know how they say they give you therapy? That, that, that's not true. That's not Their idea of therapy is this. This is how the conversation goes. Tell me how you feel. Okay, well, um, I think I'm a guy. I felt like it my whole life. Okay, and do you know of the side effects you might get from tea? Uh, yeah, I heard I might get a bit of acne. That's great. We're going to get you to live as a man for a year now, and then we're going to put you on hormones. Now, this is where they catch you as well. How are you supposed to actually live as the opposite gender without the medicalization? Right. Technically, it was just the same as I had been already. Yeah, you're like, I've already got six years under my belt. I'm good. Here's, yep. my, here's my application. Yeah. So I had another year of just living how I already was. So they weren't going to put you on anything. They just wanted you to go out you, and put a hat on. You have to and, live as a year. And, Say you're a man and that's it. Yeah, after your first appointment, you have to live as that gender for a year first. But it's it's really inaccurate because when I finally did start hormones, I had a lot of problems because a lot of the side effects I was experiencing, I didn't even know about. So they didn't tell you? Nope. Acne they, is like... They told me that uh, I'd get some acne. They told me I'd be three times more likely to have a heart attack, which is the same as a biological male. I've recently found out from the truthful therapist, Pamela Garfield, Mm -hmm. that you actually have an even higher chance of having a heart attack because it does make your heart slightly bigger. So they tell two truths and a lie when they even go through this with you. And uh, the biggest side effects I was experiencing that I was really struggling with was the mood swings. They did not tell me how much of a powerful hormone testosterone is Uh and what it can do to you. I had this moment where I didn't even know who I was for a second because uh, before I started medicalization, if I got upset about it, um, I would be close to tears. I'd get mm-hmm. really like teary. But when I started tea, my blood was boiling. I was feeling anger I've never felt before. Like literally the difference between men and women. Yeah, and I'm quite a sensitive person. So I was really, really struggling with this. And my friends were going, Matt, why are you acting like this? You're, you're getting so mad for no reason. And I was like, what's happening to me? What's happening Did to me? Did your friends know you were on? Yes, were they knew. Okay. They knew. But I didn't get any help with that. I got no support with that. They didn't explain to me these things would happen. So... I was having like a crisis of identity. Like, yeah. is this Again. changing who I am? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, another one. And I was already yeah. confused, you know? Yeah. So that was really, really tough. And then by the next time I had an appointment, they didn't see me again for a while. So they kind of send you on your way, you know? So you tell them that you're raging inside, which is very dangerous, by the way. Yep. Someone who has already has a history of being confused, committing suicide, now yep. saying, hey, this stuff is hurting me. And they're yep. kind of like, mm, pretty much. Yeah, okay. pretty much brushed wow. it off. And then my next appointment at the gender clinic wasn't even to evaluate how it was going. It was to get ready to sign me off for top surgery. And this is... Did you request it? Or was that like, hey, your next step in this process is this? It's the next step, yeah. And uh, they they pretty much just offer it to you. And I wanted it done at the time anyway because, you know, I, I was 
where I'd been really overweight before I had like very big breasts and the <laughs> testosterone as well. The issue with it is um, they literally, it sounds really revolting, but my breasts weren't even breasts by the end of it. They were empty, saggy pockets because the testosterone had moved all the weight. So they were just drooping sacks. So I had to get them removed technically. They so were the awful. So the testosterone was like shrinking your boobs, but right? But leaving all the skin but left behind. But leaving all of the... It was really disgusting. Like I was so insecure all the time. And I was binding and binders are so dangerous. I had open sores all over my chest. Like oh my I would be in so much pain and constantly from the binding. Well, and like your whole life you can't, you, you can't like, not that you would because you had kind of breasts take your shirt off but like if you're really living as a man you take your shirt off and yes. go swimming but you're like i'm just this mess of a thing yeah and one of the saddest things about that is that was actually one of the things i was looking forward to i was a lifeguard for quite a while so i used to love swimming and things like that and i always had to wear a top in the pool mm -hmm. and uh, i was like one day when i have my surgery i'm not gonna have to do it anymore my surgery in my opinion like, I hated how it looked so much that I still want to wear a t-shirt when I go swimming now. Aww. Because my scars haven't healed properly. Mm. They're still quite chunky and red. One of my, I nearly lost one of my nipples during the surgery. And the excuse that they stuck back on just looks like a flat piece of skin that doesn't even look like a nipple. So I feel like I was butchered. I showed it to Jamie and Sasha and they actually made me feel a bit better because they were like, it doesn't look as bad as you think it does. But right. I've had a lot of issues with it too. And one of the things that, really hurts me is that my wife can't even cuddle me when we're lying down because it causes my whole body to spasm because I have muscle damage from where they did the surgery. Gosh. If she even lays on me here, my body starts literally physically jolting. When I went to the airport to fly here, my chest um, flashed up on security cameras and I got selected for a special search. Oh my gosh. So something's gone wrong. Yeah. Why am I flashing up red? And I mean, I got selected for two special searches, one at that moment and one when I went to board the plane. They treated me like a criminal. I had to take my top off and then they saw my scars and went, oh, we're really sorry. Were you wearing a Gays Against Groomer shirt? No, I was not. I was like, <laughs> I can think of one good reason why. Yeah. Were you wearing a Trump shirt? Were you, were you wearing a conservative flag? Like no, anything. I, I didn't no. have anything like that on me at all. Um, it, so something in my surgery obviously went seriously wrong. That's is there any chance that there's something, you know, like you like see in... Left behind? Yeah, literally. Like, I'm like I've Grey's Anatomy. Like, that. that's real medical, but... Did they leave a rag in there or something? Well, I don't know, but I know when they stitched me up, they used staples. So there could be one of them still lingering around in there. But um, yeah, I, I had all of those issues with that. And the other thing I really noticed at Tavistock was when I went to my first couple of uh, appointments, um, it was just me and like one other person in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. By the appointment I went to for my last sign up for top surgery, the waiting room was full of people and what worried me the most was it was younger people with their parents. Mm -hmm. Now I know in the UK you can't start medicalization till 18 but they're definitely doing some kind of affirming care. Right. Or can they do it with parent with parental consent or no? Cuz I'm I'm Maybe, wondering if these parents uh, There was are a going, rule oh, about we, that ages ago. Agree. There was a rule about that. And the thing and is the rules like are changing every day. So. I don't think all of these parents are doing this to look progressive. I think some of them are genuinely trying to do what they believe is best for their child. Mm. And when you've got these therapists and uh, the, the, the media and stuff saying things like, would you rather have a trans child or a dead child? My God, uh, yeah, pretty, yeah. That's what they're saying a yeah. lot. And, it, you know, that's why we're seeing this because these parents clearly think, oh, if, my, if I don't do this, my kid's gonna kill themselves. And it's simply not true. The argument doesn't end there. You're actually more likely to kill yourself if you've been butchered. Yes, there have been there have been studies done that you're, it's a very high percentage more likely to kill yourself after a transition. Yeah, and like, here's the thing, like I, I stopped taking testosterone nearly three months ago now because it was making me incredibly ill. And this is like quite a few years down the line. Yeah. Heart palpitations, like crazy to the point where- I, Now that you're off of it, you're getting heart palpitations? I'm still getting them now, but I is was- Is your heart like trying to shrink again? I don't know, but like I, while I was on it, I was having the heart palpitations and the acne got so bad to the point it was cystic and like so painful. Um, so I came off the tea because I was worrying. And since I've come off it, I'm having even worse health issues. Like I've been really ill since, since Amphes. I've had a few good days lately, oh um, but 
I've been vomiting a lot. I've been suffering from terrible migraines. Uh, the heart palpitations haven't stopped. I'm lethargic to the point I'm going to bed at really early times. Um, my wife's been so worried about me. Mm-hmm. And she's been, you know, especially where I'm in the US as well, when I'm still going through all my immigration and stuff. And so it's like, how do I help you? How do I help you kind of thing? And, and yeah. she's been so distraught over it. And then I feel terrible because she's doing all she can. You know? So you, you're having severe medical issues on testosterone, but severe medical issues off of testosterone. Yeah, because so they whatever pretty it's much done to my bound body. you, yes. bound you to. I'm at the uh, like point. Like a need of medical. Yeah. The rest of your life. I'm at the point where it's like, can I even come off it? Do I have to find another way to go back on it without the injections, maybe the the gel or something? Because. Clearly, without it, I'm having even worse issues because I've been on it for so many years now yeah. that my body's like, help, help, it's help. Like a, I mean, it's like an addiction now, I'm yeah, sure. It's a, it's a lose-lose. It. It's a lose-lose. I'm, I'm, I'm screwed on it and the screwed same way off it. And I'm quite scared. I'm going to be honest. I've been absolutely terrified with it. And then I see more of this stuff about the kids and I just want to cry because I'm having these issues as an adult. And they're hard to handle. Yeah. Imagine a 12-year-old. Yeah. Eight-year-old. Yeah, when I see these like young detransitioners like Chloe Carl and what's happened to them, mm-hmm. my heart just absolutely bleeds. Like every chance I get to tell her story, I do it because what she's been through, like if I feel like this, I can't imagine how she feels Yeah, and the others. And, and, and they get adults, silenced. There's adults out there doing this to kids, allowing yeah. their children. Yeah. Like you would never, every parent would say, I would never wish ill on my child. Yep. I want the best for my child. I would give my life for my child. And yet, to affirm an identity crisis at such an early age, it, it handicaps them. It does, and you've got absolute monsters, and I'll call her out, I don't care, Eli Ehrlich, who was, is putting children on puberty blockers without parental consent, and then they give her a place on Vice's panel. People like myself, or, other, like, or Buck Angel Blair, could be on these panels telling the truth, yeah. and instead, they it, prop up people like that. That are hurting kids. They're monsters. And I think everyone who's been doing this, we all need to keep a list because we, one day we will hold these people accountable. Mm-hmm. People like Dr. Gallagher who are mutilating kids in Florida and calling themselves the Yeet the Teat Surgeon. Like she, the what? Oh, yeah. Dr. Gallagher in Florida. She calls herself the Yeet the Teat Surgeon. She Yeet posts, the Teat? She's on TikTok and she brags about mutilating minors. She even made a video saying uh, she was lamenting that she doesn't get to do it even more. <gasps> And she came under fire recently because she literally botched um, a surgery and it went viral. Oh my gosh. So that poor, that what poor ages, kid. What age is she? Oh, like... she's doing it to youth like 12, 13. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and she's so proud of it. And the way I see it is, if I found out my surgeon was on TikTok, they would not be my surgeon for a start. Right, you're, you're making a career out of my medical needs. There's or like no you're making a, a sham and a mockery mm-hmm. of of confused children it's disgraceful of it. It, 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 it's it's horrible like what happened to being professional yeah oh gosh that's so so it, with everything that you've gone through and are currently going through would you say like if you could go back to 26 would you would you do it or would you no because even though i found out during those appointments that i was technically intersex they had to do tests on me i didn't know i was intersex until i went down to that clinic i had no idea so what does, if inter- what does intersex mean that's what you're saying right inter- intersex. yeah so basically i was even though i was born with the female parts it kind of ties in with what my mum was told because they had to do blood tests on me mm-hmm. uh before they put me on hormones and it came back that i naturally had 10 times more testosterone in my body than a biological woman should have to start with. And it was nothing to do with polycystic ovaries or anything like that. So when that came out, I was uh, pulled into a a room and the doctor was like, I need to bring a woman in because I actually have to check you down below to see if you have any abnormalities because you're technically intersex. And so I, I didn't have any down there, but the, the, the hormones and stuff came back. So I still didn't know that though until then. So the way... I see it is if I knew what I knew now, mm-hmm. I would have been a girl. And that makes you really sad. Because mm. now you can't be. No, because here's the thing. Like, some people do detransition, but look at me. Do I look female to you? 
I think you'd make a beautiful woman. But it's like I, my my transition, like I have the the facial hair, my voice is broken. That will never go back. If I tried to go back now, I'd have a worse time because I'd look like a male to female. I will never look like a female again, no matter what I do. So all I can do. So now you feel stuck. Yeah. Because I feel this way. Now you feel way. stuck as a gender that you thought you were, that you know that you're not, and you wish you could go back to just what yeah. you were really born as. Yeah. So the way I see it now is um, I'm always going to look like this, so it's best to just stay being that. But I will use my voice every opportunity I get to stop others from doing this. Mm-hmm. Because the children, they are the future. And it really hurts me how much they're attacking them. From all angles, it's not just this. It, it's coming from everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, society doesn't know what it means to protect kids anymore. Why do you think um, Why do you think kids all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in mass, like a trend, suddenly believe that they're the wrong gender? Is it because of influencers? Is it... It's... Like, why... Like, I was a total tomboy. I bet you and I were the same. Mm-hmm. I was skitching off cars and roller blades. <laughs> yeah. I fell. Are you okay? I'm fine. Leave me alone. Um, never did I think, oh, well, I really like guys. I like hanging out with the dudes. I belch. I, I'm a dude. Never. But now, one little ping of like, oh, you tend to like the color pink. You must be a girl. Where are they hearing this idea that, well, then you could just change your gender? It's coming from several places. It's social media. It's corporations like Disney mm-hmm. pushing all this LGBT LGBTQ propaganda. It's the school system with their gender ideology. And uh, you know what? The amount of parents who have reached out to me, some of the things I hear are absolute horror stories. This parent literally told me that both of her children came home from school one day and told her they were trans. And when she asked what that meant, they did not know. And they say this is not a trend. And then you see videos, I don't know if you've seen it, but there was that teacher on TikTok who had the nerve to say that one of her students had felt safe enough to disclose their pronouns to her. And that when they'd done that, she then told the whole class and then they gave theirs. Now, what that tells us is that kids like to be special, right? So she made this child special. Look how brave he is. He discloses pronouns. And then everyone's, all the other kids are like, I have pronouns too. I have them too. I have them too. Do you like me? Literally, that's how it is. And then they have the nerve then as well to create distrust between these children and their parents by saying they're not safe. Yeah. Yep. You can trust me more than you can trust your parents. And kids already are looking for an excuse to latch onto a, an adult figure yeah. that loves and appreciates them because, well, my parents do love and appreciate me because they're my parents. They have to. But mm-hmm. you, your affection means more because you don't have to. It's it's pure evil what I'm seeing. You know, what happened to just learning math and English and things yeah. like that? What happened to just learning the history of your country? Why mm-hmm. are we now forcing children to think about mature themes that they might not necessarily have even come to themselves? You know, like if someone's going to end up transgender, they're going to end up transgender. But mm-hmm. if you are taking a room full of children and telling them all about these pronouns, all these different billions of genders they've created... It's, they, the kids are sponges. Mm-hmm. They absorb things so quickly. And the even more terrifying aspect of it is, look at Gen Z, for example. They're already a very, like, pretty messed up generation. What are their kids going to be like? Yeah, no kidding. It's the movie Idiocracy. That's where we're heading. Yeah. Like, left there, is right, up, up is down. There's going to be, like, no procreation. No. Because... Like, one of the biggest things that I tell people when they say, why are you speaking out against this? Why are you speaking out? And I go, let people live their truth. And I'm like, but but their truth affects everyone else in the world. No, it doesn't. Well, yes, it does. Because let me tell you what. I have an eight-year-old boy. What if he, we've, we've made it so acceptable for people to just now not say they're trans, just say, I am a woman. Well, yeah. you're not. You're trans. What if when he's 25, he falls in love with this girl? He asks her to marry him, and they get married, and he says, hey, I want to have kids. And she goes, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you I was born a boy. Like, 
But yep. the whole world has embraced me as a woman, and I've never needed to say I'm trans because I am a woman. Yep. That's in, it's in the dictionary now. You just affected my child's life mm -hmm. in a horrible way. And this is the thing, like you're saying, like if you castrate this many people, it leads to depopulation because people aren't going to be having kids in the future. Yep. It's it's all an agenda, and um, people need to start realizing that because a lot of these things actually tie into each other. Mm -hmm. And now we're going full conspiracy, right? Yeah. We're now we're conspiracy theorists because we're literally seeing a trend of depopulation yep. in how many different ways and this is one of them it is because so many of the youth are being targeted mm -hmm. so many people are using pronouns now or identifying as this and that and the more people you make fall into that trap it's going to lead to a lot of people who can't have kids it's already it's happening like yeah the couple that <laughs> i know you saw it uh non-binary gave birth to his hers non-binary's baby using yes a, a donor but i'm like why do you need a donor you're literally a female if you're giving birth it's insane to me donated and, you know, eggs and yeah i've had people go at me for my opinions on this but the way i saw it is when i started transitioning i gave up in that decision anything that would have come with being a woman and having children is one of them. Mm -hmm. So when I see these trans men who have already gone through this medicalization and they decide to have a child, for one, that's not fair on your child. Mm -hmm. Why bring them into that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's just so wrong as well because then it's, it's, it's horrible to women yeah. because they turn around and go, oh, men can have children too. No, they cannot. That is a biological female. It's a woman, yep. And that is why they are able to carry a child. Stop blurring the lines, be honest. Right. And the worst thing is these, these trans men refuse to even acknowledge that they are, that they have female parts and that's why they're able to do this. Right. It they, would be a different story if they were truthful and go, um, yeah, men can't have babies. I'm a woman identifying as a man, duh. Yeah, right? I mean, but have they you don't... seen that new footage of that uh, lecturer and she's trying to teach um, about the womb and stuff and then the, the students like, they are a sign of how men mentally ill society is because what about the men that have children? No, they have, a woman has, has a uterus. He has a uterus too. Like, <laughs> oh my I mean, God. It's really terrifying and we're at the beginning of this. Like yeah. five years down the line, this slippery slope we're already seeing, especially with youth detransitioners because they're being affirmed at an age where they don't even know what they are. Mm -hmm. And I mean, puberty, for example, okay? That's a really tough time. Mm -hmm. It's a really tough time and... Uh, there was the study that came out from Cambridge University that since uh, in between 2009 and 2019, there was a 1,000% increase in trans identifying biological males and a 4,400% increase in trans identifying biological females. Now, the reason why is what we've been talking about already. A lot of girls, when they're younger, they're tomboys. Mm -hmm. And then what do you go through through puberty when you're a girl? Periods. A lot of yep. girls don't want to have a period. You find out that you might have to carry a baby one day, and like that's great when you're old. But when you're a child, you're like, oh, I don't want that. Yeah, you that's know? gonna hurt. Well, yeah, being a what is it? Twelve? I swear, it's like eight now. The kids are starting periods. Yeah. Like going through female puberty is horrible. I don't know what it's like for dudes. I mean, sounds like they have fun when they go through puberty. They always go up in their <laughs> shit the door. But um. Yeah, so now now the trans movement, you've seen the pasta sauce thing. So it's, it okay, it adds to the mental illness aspect yes, of it, it right? Because you, you don't need to bleed to like, okay, you're going to walk around and say you're a female. You're really a man, right? You're going to walk around and say you're a female. You're not really going to have a period, nor do you need to have a period to affirm yourself if you truly believe you're a girl. Mm -hmm. But they're sticking these cylindrical cubes of pasta sauce up their crevice. And when I say crevice, it's because I don't know what really what there is down you there. You don't want to know. I don't. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> and then letting it thaw out so that it's like simulating blood, simulating. I'm like, you're putting food up your body. Yeah. 
If that's not a sign of mental illness. It is. And 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 this is what they're doing after being affirmed even. Yeah, and the other thing I'm noticing, and I'm sure you have as well, is a lot of it seems to be fetish. Mm-hmm. They can't they can't talk about being trans about making it sexual. Right. Yeah. But then they say that it's not. <laughs> but then they say the pride flag, of course, is like it's not about sex, yeah. you know. And it's yeah. like, well, but it is because that's really what makes you and I different. Is if you're human and I'm human and we have brown hair and we have brown eyes and we have skin, and you sleep with the same gender and I sleep with, then that's what your flag is about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like the other thing that gets me is like pride in general. Let's just let's just look at that for a second. It's so sleazy. Mm. You know, like I love hearing gay, you say this gay pride used to be, you know, originally they wanted to make it where they could just express that they could love who they wanted. Mm -hmm. Since when did that become gimp masks and mm. public sex acts? And dog chain yes. things and on leashes and in front with of children. children. With in children. front, yeah. Yep. It's absolutely yep. horrific. And then they talk about how they want acceptance and things and the more they pull these kind of sick stunts, they're gonna cause the absolute opposite. Yeah. And yep. it's really hurtful, like, um, for example, our friend Carol, Right Side Lesbian, um, she was one of the old school gays who, who fought mm -hmm. for her rights. And you might have seen her video she made where she said, if I'd known that it would lead to yeah. drag shows, yep. I wouldn't have done it. And yep. that's that heartbreaking. Yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah, but that's how gays I mean, I, gays against groomers is, that, that's the whole premise, is like the LGBTQ community is creating this stereotype for yeah. you guys and you're not all like that. Yeah. I mean, we have got a gay person, a trans person sitting here saying, keep your fetishes at home. Um, your pride is not to be shoved in everybody's mm -hmm. face. Like, this isn't me saying it, not the good little Christian girl, like, conservative. It's the people that are getting labeled for this crap saying, uh, hello, yeah, no, we, we don't approve. It's really horrible. And, like, I had this chat with Buck Angel, and it got quite emotional because we both turned around to each other and said that when we started our transition all those years ago, and he's been trans longer than me, you know, he, he's one of the biggest names in the trans movement. And uh, we, we were saying that when we first transitioned years ago, we wanted to just live our lives, be ourselves, not getting anyone's way. But because of what this group of people are doing, what, these pe what they're pushing, we now have to be very loud and say, look, I'm a biological female. Mm -hmm. We have to do this stuff because if not, kids are going to carry on being lied to. Yeah. I mean, the stuff they are learning in school right now with this gender ideology nonsense is complete fabrication. Education has turned into feelings over facts. Yep. Yeah. And that doesn't work like that. And it and feelings shouldn't even be in school. I mean, no, they shouldn't. At all. Like these teachers, these TikTok gay teachers that are like, I should be able to share with my students who my partner's like, no. No. I didn't know who my, my third grade teacher was a lesbian. I had no clue. Yeah. Because back then, Unfortunately, it was something that she had to kind of hide because of the, the, the stereotype and all those things. But I, I, she didn't need to talk about it. She was just no. Mrs. Moses. That's it. She was my teacher. Yeah, and I got in a little bit of a debate with someone on TikTok once because they said the most dumbest thing. They were like, well, my teacher told me that her husband plays golf. Is that bad? And I was like, since when was talking about sex with kids and gender ideology, the same as your teacher telling you that her husband plays golf. That's, <laughs> how can you even equate the two? Yes. It's and, very different. And if, you, and if, and if, and I'm like such a, I'm such a, I think I'm a level-headed person. If the issue is, well, this girl is married to a man, which is the traditional American family. So if she says my husband, she gets to talk about her life. So I should be able to say, well, my wife, because I'm a lesbian. Well, if it comes down to it, fine. She doesn't get to say that either. If the kids say, are you married? You say, that's my personal life. Yeah. Do you have kids? That's my personal life. Like if it comes down to all of us having to say that information is not pertinent to your education, that statement should be literally cued. That yeah. information is not pertinent to your education. It's that's not. the way it should be all around. I don't care. Straight people, gay people, yeah. all of it. Absolutely. Because it isn't pertinent to their information. Yeah. And then you've got these crazy people on TikTok. Like I saw one, some trans man commented that 
he had his gender affirmed by three-year-olds. If you need a three-year-old <laughs> to validate you, you probably need to seek special help. If you're talking about your genitalia and which genitalia <laughs> you wish you had had with three-year-olds... There's something not... Yeah, you're probably right. a pedophile. Because little, yeah, little <laughs> kids know the difference pretty uh -huh. early on. Okay, I've got a three-year-old. My six-year-old daughter knows that he has a boy pee, -pee and I have a girl pee, -pee. Yeah. So if the only difference between man and a woman to three-year-olds is that, that's what you're teaching them. Like, that's what you're talking to them about mm -hmm. when you're trying to say, well, I'd rather be a woman. They're thinking, well, you've got a pee-pee. So yeah. <laughs> you've got a boy pee-pee. It's but disgusting. These kids don't even understand what gender really is at that age. And, and, and they've got these adults going, would you say that I'm a man? What? Yeah, no, I wouldn't. And, and that's the thing, too, <laughs> no, is they're not I stupid. Wouldn't. They're like, um, I can tell what you are. What would your what would your message be to to kids who are gender confused and, and thinking about transitioning? Uh, my message to them would be your parents need to be your number one confidant because that's who should be dealing with this. You don't need some stranger telling you. Tell your parents how you feel mm -hmm. and make it known that like expressing yourself isn't a bad thing, but no medicalization should be allowed until you're an adult because you might not feel that way mm -hmm. the whole time. You might reach the middle of your puberty and realize that you were just a lesbian or gay or, you know, or just gender non-conforming, you know? Yeah. Like we've got amazing guys in our organization like Mario who wear heels, but he's still really manly. He mm -hmm. takes things on like a trooper. He's incredible, you know? Like yeah. you don't have to change your gender just because you're a girl and you like the color blue or like playing with a toy car. Right. Just learn to love yourself. Mm -hmm. You're perfect how you are. That is what I would say. And what would you say to parents who have a child that is just like you? I think I was born this way. I think I was supposed to be this way. What would, what advice would you give them with that child? Explain to them what I was saying about the medicalization, like to wait, but just let them cut their hair. Let mm -hmm. them explore with clothes if they mm -hmm. want to. But just really get it through to them that there are risks with this. You can't simply pause your puberty. They just need to stay 10 steps ahead of the lies that are being told. And if you have a good relationship with your child, they're going to come to you anyway because you're their parent. Yeah. Didn't Angelina Jolie let Shiloh live as like a boy for, yep. and now she's back to being yeah, a she's beautiful young back. woman. Yep. Yep. I, she, I don't think they transitioned her, right? They just, they just, they let her cut her hair yeah. and they let her dress in boy clothes and she grew out yep. of it. And I wonder how many kids' lives would be saved if I've we just let that happen. I've had so many women comment on my videos and say stuff like, I'm so glad that I'm not a youth today because I used to think I was a boy and now I'm married with like three children. So many women say the same thing. And it's because the tomboy thing is very real. Yes. It is. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm one of those. I, I honestly believe that if I would have lived in this time and I was a hard-headed little girl, yeah. I would have convinced my parents, you know, I want to cut my hair off and it's I want to be a boy. And here's my new name. I tried to change my name so many times. <laughs> They've got to stop Luckily transing. Yeah. Got to stop transing kids. It, it's yeah. crimes against humanity, mm -hmm. crimes against children, and uh, all of these monsters. Like I said earlier, they will be held accountable one day, mm -hmm. because we're already seeing a huge rise in youth detransitioners, mm -hmm. and in the next five years, it's going to be even worse. It's going to be. It's like a huge boulder rolling off a cliff. It's getting. It's picking up speed, and it's becoming unstoppable. And I see you at the bottom of the boulder trying to push yeah, it back up yeah. and you are just one person. But I will say this, we know that it's going to get worse yeah. because when you went through it, it wasn't popular and now it yeah. is. So your voice right now means a lot because there's going to be hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of kids that are going to need your voice and your leadership and your help and your sympathy and your empathy mm -hmm. because... It's so sad to think that you're not going to be alone soon in your story. Like your story is powerful yeah. and not enough people are telling it. And yet in five to 10 years, it's I could probably weird. do a podcast every week. Oh, you probably could. Detransitioned people. So. You're going to have a lot of people who are absolutely broken. Yeah. I mean, for example, look at, look at Shapeshifter. Mm -hmm. You know, his interview with Blair White when he was like, I miss my penis. That broke my heart. Uh. So I worry about him. He's such a lovely, lovely guy, and he, he feels so 
betrayed by Big Pharma and mm. well, and and you and you, they, these people deceive little children. Yeah, like you can trust me. I'm a doctor. I'm affirming how you feel. Yep. I'm your best friend. You, I'm your confidant. And then you go and you ruin their life. Yep. Like, I can't. I can't wait to see the public hanging. I know. It's all about the money. Yep. Like it. It, it really upsets me because you know the step used to be therapy. Well, now the therapists are paid to a firm. Yeah. So you're. It's not honest anymore. It's oh, you feel that way. I'm going to get a million dollars for for sending you off for this. That's how much they get paid. A million dollars per surgery. So of course they're going to be sending them on their way. That's not even to count the lifetime of med- medicine yep. that this person is now going to need because you've just solidified them as a client for the rest of their life. And medicine that's probably going to mess them up down the line. Yeah. I mean, the, the health issues I'm having, like it just makes it so much more real for me about the kids because mm. I'm having all these problems as an adult. And did you care? Developed. Did you care much about this? Like, oh, kids shouldn't go through this before you started realizing how much damage it was doing or oh yeah as soon as i found out that the children were starting to be targeted mm-hmm. i i literally was turning to my wife going i need to speak up about this yeah like i know i've got anxiety but someone's got to do it i'm seeing so many people who are scared to speak out mm-hmm. because they're scared of what the woke mob will say to them but all i can say about that is this isn't about you anymore if you're scared it's not about you this is mm-hmm. about the children who are the future we need to protect them at all costs, even if we get hate for it. Yeah. The kids are more important. So tell me, what's this X Factor story that your wife keeps telling me about? <laughs> okay, so back in 2018, um, I auditioned for The X Factor. And before you get to the judges, you have three rounds with TV producers. Anyway, I, I turned up for the, the, third, the third audition because I got through the other two. They were video auditions. And... Um, they gave me a form to fill out. Mm -hmm. Now, the first question that comes up is, has anything traumatic happened in your life? So immediately, they don't care if you can sing or not. (laughs) They're looking for that sob story. Well, when they saw that I was trans, their face lit up and they said, we've never had an openly trans contestant before. They're like, TV gold. Yep, at that moment, I knew that it wasn't going to be about what I sounded like. So I sung my first song. They were, they really liked it. They were like, sing another song, please. He's the best singer. (laughs) Yeah, it was was kind of like that. Um, I sung my second song and I was like, so you told me if I did a second song, that would be kind of good news. Is that good news? And they were like, oh, it's extremely good news. And I walked out of that room feeling really upset because I knew that they just knew that I was trans You're and they were, were going to use me to appeal to the LGBT community. Yep. And I dodged a bullet. I was very blessed because they actually cancelled the show that year to do a celebrity one instead. And I've never been so thankful Interesting. because I dread to think what they would have done with me. They probably yeah. would have tried to pull me into this woke mob, yep. have me as like some LGBT. Made you the spokesperson yeah. of all the, yeah. And that's just not me. Yeah. But God had, X God Factor had different is so plans corrupt. for you because mm-hmm. you're going to make a much bigger difference telling your story the way you're telling it so saving more lives singing probably hasn't saved anyone no. <laughs> <laughs> i mean singing sounds great and everything yeah. but yeah it, does, it yeah. doesn't do anything of that sort oh my so gosh, I'm, that's crazy. I'm just glad that, that never happened because i probably wouldn't be sat in this chair right mm-hmm. now you'd be too big for me <laughs> you, <you'd laughs> not be, even that they would the have brainwashed me <laughs> patriot barbie online <laughs> oh they would have brainwashed me so yeah. bad <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh all right what's your cheers to I want to give a shout out to everyone who has been using their voice during these dark times and getting loud for the children, even though it comes with a lot of pushback. You're all so, so brave. And here's to 2023 being the year that we end all of this evil against children. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. That's a good one. And that includes you. Yeah. (laughs) You warmed up really well. (laughs) Well, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you for having me. Thanks for tuning in to the Patriot Barbie podcast. Follow me on Truth Social at the Patriot Barbie and Instagram at the.patriot.barbie. Subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with your friends. You can find this show, my book Targeted, and my apparel line on www.patriotbarbie.com. God bless America and God bless you.